What's happening everybody? Trey here, joined by my dad, Sean, and today at Reactions to the Classics, we are continuing our journey, Dad, through Tom Waits' discography, and today we are up to his 12th record here, The Black Rider, uh, released in 1993. Want to shout out our longtime friend, big Tom Waits fan yeah. and uh, patron of the channel, Josh, for uh, taking us through this journey, and uh, we're going to keep on keeping on. We are, Trey. We've done a ton of these. I mean, if this is his 12th album, then this is the 12th one that we have done. And when you go on a journey, Trey, and you're doing it <laughs> chronologically, you can't skip anything. No. And, you know, I'll let you, you'll figure it out as we go along, whether that's a good or bad thing with this one. But released in 1993, features studio versions of songs that Tom wrote for the play The Black Rider, directed by Robert Wilson, co-written by William S. Burroughs. The play is based on the German folk tale Der... Freischitz, you know I messed that up, but oh well, by Johann August Appel, which had previously been made into an opera by Carl Maria von Weber. The play premiered on March 31st, 1990 in Hamburg, Germany. Its world English premiere occurred in 1998 mm. at the Edmonton International Fringe Festival. Waits would later collaborate with Wilson on the plays Alice and Blood Money, respectively. Now, before I go, I just want to make sure everybody's clear because people get confused in this. Tom did not write the play. Mm -hmm. He just wrote the music. 1987, Waits made his theatrical debut with Frank's Wild Years. Of course, you can check out our review yeah. of that. He asked Robert Wilson to produce it, but he couldn't make it. The 1987 video for Blow When Blow was shot in an early 20th century German cabaret style, and Waits' tour for Frank's Wild Years slash Big Time had turned into an expressionist theatrical show. Waits was ready for experimental theater at that point. Then there was beat guru William Burroughs, who was going to deliver libretto for The Black Rider. We're, we're getting fancy today. We sure. are. So here's what Waits had to say. And this is just a scene, Trey, that I can imagine Tom Waits in. We all went to meet William Burroughs in Lawrence, Kansas. Greg Cohen and Robert Wilson and myself. And we talked about this whole thing. It was very exciting. Burroughs took pictures of everyone standing on the porch, which, once again, is kind of <laughs> odd to start with. Took me out into the garage and showed me his shotgun paintings. Showed me the garden. Around 3 o'clock, he started fondling his wristwatch as we got closer to cocktail hour. He was very learned and serious, obviously an authority on a wide variety of topics. Knew a lot about snakes, insects, firearms. What I liked about that quote when I left it in the research is uh, that's the way I would expect Tom oh, to tell me a story. Very descriptive, man. like nothing's just as simple we went and hung out. <laughs> and uh, he, Waits felt he had to step in, couldn't turn it down. He might have even had less obvious reasons to feel attracted to the play. It, it is about deals with the devil and addictions of all kinds. Waits was in the middle of fighting some modern day devils himself and had already sworn off those other magic bullets, a little teaser for a song later on. Yep. Uh, the three were working together would prove to be an extremely successful collaboration. The two and a half hour play uh, premiered, as we noted, in uh, March of 1990, and uh, staged at a cost of $1.75 million. Which I don't know what plays cost, but that seems like an <laughs> insane amount of money for something you put, so I mean, no wonder uh, Broadway plays cost an absolute fortune and charge you an absolute <laughs> fortune to do it. The play was directed and designed by Robert Wilson. Mm. That is the entire structure of the play, stage design, artwork, actors, movements, and gestures, everything visual. William Burroughs added the text inspired by what I was talking about, the German folktale, so... I didn't even mm. know how plays work, so I guess no, one guy yeah. writes it, one guy figures out how they're going to act it out, and one guy writes <laughs> the music. Yeah, so as you mentioned, Burroughs interpreted the original folktale, added modern Anglo-American implications and allusions, and turned it into the libretto. That is, the actual spoken word fitting Wilson's ideas, directions, and designs. Waits, uh, who was collaborating with Greg Cohen, uh, added music and lyrics, having Wilson's theater images and Burroughs' text to be inspired by. Yeah, so they kind of told him what was up. Waits in 93 said his cut up text and open process of finding a language for this story became a river of words for me to draw from in the lyrics for the songs he brought a wisdom and a voice to the piece that is woven throughout and then all the way in 2006 he said he talking about William Burroughs wrote most of his words at his place in Lawrence and he'd send piles of material our dramaturge would edit and paste and cut and find the right spot for everything hmm. Burroughs was just coughing up all this stuff <laughs> not writing in any linear way sometimes I would take something he wrote and turn it into a lyric Sometimes we collaborate, like in Just the Right Bullet. Waits remained outside of the performance. He composed the songs and taught them to the actors in the Talia Theater production. The play became a huge success in Europe and to a lesser extent in the U.S. Waits again in 2000 noted that was a long project, but it got done and played all over Europe. It only came to the Brooklyn Academy of Music once, but over there it's kind of, I don't know, I was going to say like Cats or something, everybody knows it, but they're also more of a theater.
theater audience. They still participate in those traditions, whereas here in the USA, it takes a lot to get folks out to a theater, unless you tell them it's a movie first or it's going to be one. All songs written by the great Tom Waits, except where we note, recorded in 1989 um, at the Music Factory in Hamburg, Germany, and also in 1993. Uh, so kind of got a split uh, yeah. studio time up in there with that. But uh, all that to say, Dad, I guess we can uh, kind of get uh, get started with this thing. 20 tracks, clocks in a little under an hour, but um, there, there is a, a fair amount of instrumentals yeah, in there is. as well. Yeah, so. there is. And, and I'll say this before we get, we're going to get into the first track, but here's the thing. And I'm just going to say this before we start. And I was telling you this after mm-hmm. I, I listened before you did. I didn't really tell you much about it, but if you have a movie soundtrack, sometimes the songs go with the movie, sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's just something you play during an action scene, a yeah. love scene. Opening credits, closing credits. But when you have music that's written for a play, it's an Mm -hmm. entirely different animal, right? Because it fits in the context of all of that stuff. The staging, the atmosphere, what's Mm -hmm. going on. And in that, they usually don't play as well. I mean, there are exceptions, obviously. But a lot of times they don't play as well when you listen back to them on an album. And I think with the subject matter Mm -hmm. of this play in particular, it's not West Side Story where we're going to play (laughs) these. So I'll say all that to say that this one was a little rough for me. Uh We start out with Lucky Day Overture, lyrics of a carnival barker, barker and everything they see. Uh, Tom's mixed back a lot in this. It's more music uh, mixed to the front. You're going to find that in a lot of these. No, yeah. It's almost like uh, what Waits is introducing you here, uh, almost like he's shouting through the megaphone, kind of get that cabaret, carnival type of atmosphere uh, going and kind of get ready to buckle up for the... uh, the, the wild rider ahead. He had a funny line. See Grace McDaniels, the mule-faced woman. She's the homeliest woman in the world. So, you know, he's just like saying all these carnival type carnival stuff. Carnival things, man. He's uh, shouting stuff out. Come on and see it. Um, and then, Dad, we go to the Black Rider, the uh, the uh, title track here. And um, yet again, you kind of continue that as he's telling them, hey, come see the Black Rider. Yeah, exactly. Finishes repeatedly we'll have a gay old time, which was a line... I knew it the second I heard it yep. forever from the Flintstones TV show song. Tom speaks in an accent, sort of, mm-hmm. and he's not really singing. He's more speaking in a weird accent because it's a play, boys and girls. Yeah, and I found it interesting. You almost have the contrast with the um, carnival-like musical atmosphere with the you know gay old time where then that's uh, contrasted with the intimidating black writer lyrically yeah. who's uh, who's about to, to come on through. I thought it was, uh, you know, it was it was a decent track. And then we go to November, which, uh, hey, man, it, it kind of worked out because it's November when we're filming yep. this. Um, and, uh, hey, Tom just uh, kind of gets that dreariness. Yeah, it's about November being dreary. <laughs> Tom's singing pretty rough. Rough, but you can understand it's so kind of the weights lyrics you get some accordion what a white banjo or something Trey I don't know what that was sounded like a banjo to me yeah it's uh, kind of the first traditional weights vocal yeah. I think we have on here though it's a bit more morose lyrically um, we have a quote November has tied me to an old dead tree get word to April to come rescue me not a uh, not a bad track and then we are gonna go to just the right bullets yeah and it has a lot of drug references especially mm-hmm. heroin Likely the influence I found of William Burroughs' participation in the project. The first one's always free has been noted elsewhere as a clear drug dealer. Come on. Here, shining like a spoon alludes to many heroin users' tragically romanticized relationship to spoons. I mean, the singing was almost like Vincent Price or a horror guy here. Mm. Has a sped up instrumental like solo in the middle of it building drama. Some crazy percussion theme. What you would want in something that, you know, is mm-hmm. building up this kind of manic thing no man I, i'm with you dad i highlighted that in my notes as well i love the frantic uh percussion and guitar lead in the instrumental that uh, just kind of came through at the middle of the song and also uh in in the the coda uh and you can kind of tell this guy is uh, only hoping to hook another another person so the name of the game you got to have those clients my man as we were saying at the start some of those devils and uh bullets so to speak those vices uh those temptations are already rearing their head and then we get the the first of many instrumentals on here we have black box theme um um, which, uh, you know, does kind of uh, give that ominous dark name. Yeah. Uh, you're going to hear that word a lot, I think, on you this. You are. Dad. It's the idea. Um, and th- there is a unique mix of instrumentation on this and just uh, throughout the entire record. We have a cello here, a banjo, as you mentioned earlier, and uh, even the, the chamberlain uh, on on here as well. Yeah, it almost sounded like a xylophone <laughs> yeah. start. Very dark at ambiance to start. Now we're going to go to Ain't No Sin. Uh, this one was written by Walter Donaldson and Edgar Wesley. Three verses, Trey, that repeat mm-hmm. throughout. Uh, typical four-line verses and last two lines are same in each verse. Taint no sin to take off your skin and dance around <laughs> in your bones. So doesn't sound like Tom, mm-hmm. really. He's very clear. Sounds like an old man. 
Interesting instrumentation. Again, almost like a xylophone type with horns. Yeah, you actually had Tom on the marimba there uh, to, I think, highlight the, the versatility and instrumentation that uh, Tom has. He had a bass clarinet, just kind of made for a unique jam. Oh, I see what you wrote there. That's and, the old man. And yeah, he, I, I was really getting some strong Willie Nelson vibes from all man. people whenever he was uh, just kind of a totally left field vocal delivery um, up to this point in Waits' uh, catalog and career. Uh, that's, that's for sure. And then we get uh, another instrumental here, only a little over a minute long. Flash Pan Hunter, um, which uh, is going to be fully fleshed out here in a little bit. So uh, we'll, we'll touch on it there. And then we go to That's the Way. Music by Waits. Lyrics by William S. Burroughs. Eleven lines all start with That's the Way, the. Mm -hmm. And then just two words. Maybe an accordion here. Sounds like Tom's singing through an AM radio, but it's very clear. It just has that kind of tinniness to it yeah no i think that's a good point i dug uh i dug the rhyme scheme on this one in particular yeah. it's pretty cool uh mixed with I, I believe the organ up in there felt like the man was uh down and out and uh just uh kind of had that apathetic vocal to to reflect yeah. that uh you know not not a favorite per se or anything but uh, uh i really enjoyed though the next track we got the briar and the rose yeah, I think the rose is a sign for love. For he mentions Brennan's Glenn a few times, mm -hmm. a reference to his marriage to Kathleen Brennan. Best song by far. Tom mm -hmm. sounds great. Similar instrumentation to the prior song. Yeah, man, and uh, I, I think that we had about a three-song run here where there were just seamless transitions, yeah. one uh, one to another. It just kind of fits that play type of right, atmosphere. Right, exactly. Um, but I, I like the line, I picked the rose one early morn. I pricked my finger on a thorn. They groaned so close. Their winding wove the briar around the rose. And, add some credence to what your interpretation was with the love and the and the and the pain yeah. kind of uh being interwoven there um a heartfelt delivery on this as well uh, i'm with you dad one of the one of the hits on this record yeah now we got a russian dance this is an instrumental two yeah. lines in russian different translations out there strings percussion mm -hmm. um what would you expect what you would expect russian music to oh, sound yeah. like is kind of no I'm yeah at. you hear the stomping of the feet the yeah. the dance type atmosphere yeah. going and like going to the nutcracker right? yeah the russian type of then we get gospel train slash orchestra other instrumental horns percussions driving taking you up to the next actual uh song yeah man I, I dug on gospel train the uh the mix of the horns and the strings oppie percussion yeah. gig it again gave that sense of uh something's not quite right there something's a bit uh uneasy so to speak and then we'll go to i'll shoot the moon uh this was another one that uh i i thought was a pretty solid jam yeah i like the last verse i'll shoot the moon right out of the sky for you baby i'll be the flowers after you're dead for you baby i want to build a nest in your hair I want to kiss you and never be there. I'll shoot the moon right out of the sky for you, baby. I'll shoot the moon for you. I guess, Trey, he's professing his love for her, but this last verse sums up some other lines, and you wonder mm -hmm. if he loves her or just wants to use her. Tom's yeah. very clear here. Chilled instrumentation, so it's it's a really good performance. No, man, I, I also in my research found that uh, Scarlett Johansson, of all huh. people, covered this on a Tom Waits uh, cover record back in, I think, 2008 or so, so I'll have to check that out. Uh, Marimba returns again, mixed with the strings and organ. Again, a lot of unique uh, musical textures on uh, on this record. Uh, quite charming, Mr. Waits is, in his <laughs> delivery here. And uh, we go now to, uh, we had the instrumental for it a little bit earlier. Yeah. Now we have Flash Pan Hunter. Again, music by Tom and lyrics coming from Burroughs. Yeah, very much fits into the narrative of the play, I am sure. So hard to understand, Trey. Mm -hmm. I guess it has to do with some dark stuff. Satan, maybe. Tom, um, with guttural sounds yeah. halfway in. You know, he's, he's pretty clear, but I don't really know what the song's about. Like I said, I'm sure it fits in the context of that point. Well, and I think uh, you're, you're right on that, because we did have a couple callbacks to previous songs, right. like uh, the, the Briar and the Rose and Peg Leg. It's a bit uh, avant-garde here. Um, and, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, the weights wailing in the, the middle was a bit unique. Um, uh, not, again, just uh, kind of an all right. Tune, it's all right. tune for me, but uh, I really did enjoy this next one, though, Crossroads. Yeah, another one with music by Waits, lyrics by Burroughs. Mark Richard from Spain in 94 said, It is nearly midnight at the Sound Factory. Waits would like to add a guitar track to the song Crossroads. He likes the feel of the hallway outside the studio, so Closter and Dawes set him up there. Mm. Waits doesn't have quite the sound he wants from the arrangement, <laughs> so Dawes asks if he'd like to try something called the transient distortion from an overloaded condenser microphone effect. <laughs> Translated, this means Waits will play his guitar in the hallway on an old Fender amp recorded through the tiny mics in a battered 20-year-old boombox. So that kind of explains 
what, why it oh, sounds no. like this great songwriting. Wish I was watching the story so I, to, I would understand it. Oh, yeah. I think it's about making choices that are difficult and possibly wrong, and they all have consequences. Playing with fire and getting burned, so to speak. More spoken word, Trey, but mm. interesting in a fade. We have that whole magic bullets uh, motif kind of come up in here where you kind of go further and further into to using them and, and to the point where uh, you have bad days when you don't use them. So yeah. kind of the uh, the pangs of uh, addiction, I guess, if you will, uh, coming in there. Now we go, we had uh, the instrumental for Gospel Train earlier. Now we go to the full uh, proper song where, uh, you know, we, we get a maybe a bit of a turn in the, uh, the play narrative itself a little bit. Yeah they're imploring to follow the Lord and turn from the devil. I'm sure it's pivotal in the actual play itself. Interesting long instrumental opening, almost two minutes. Tom is mixed back. The repetitive odd instrumentation for me got annoying mm -hmm. as the song progresses. It was just too much. No, man, I, I'm with you. I, I felt the song went a little long. A couple songs felt like that to me. But uh, again, you have a cacophony of instrumentation. You got the the congas, the chamberlain, the bass clarinet, uh, and uh, even like a train sound effect, which obviously fits the, the title. Um, de definitely a bit off kilter. And, um, you know, I, I was struck by how many calls there was to get on the train, yeah. how many chances maybe to, to get on the train but before it's too late. And I think, once again, I know it's a broken record, so to speak, but if we were watching the play, it's probably yeah. this big grand scene. We wouldn't notice it was going on too long or any part mm -hmm. of it was annoying. Now we're going to an interlude, Gray Cohen instrumental, 18 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> then we go to Oily Night, 11 lines of Oily Night. That's what it is. Starts with a double bass. Tom is in a dark, menacing voice. Percussion's driving. Once again, this one, Trey, got annoying for me after a bit. Yeah, I uh, I thought the rhythm was awesome at the start, though I couldn't get behind the vocal delivery on this one. I guess I feel like uh, what some normal people do when they hear any of Tom Waits. Yeah, that's probably true, yeah. Uh, though it does reflect kind of that dark nature that much of this uh, record has. It just, uh, again, went a little long for me. And then we go to Lucky Day right here. Um, and on this one, I really enjoyed the, the lyric. That Bonnie Lass in her heart of glass could not hold a candle to bumming around. Uh, Waits kind of winds himself up as the song progresses more and more in here. Uh, can't help but uh, feel the passion in there and uh, get a bit fired up yourself. Yeah, basically he's leaving it all behind. He isn't going home. And like you said, impassioned delivery, chilled. Uh, most instrumentally, it's just kind of chilled. Now we're going to go to the next to the last song. The Last Rose mm -hmm. of Summer. He is lamenting the end of summer. Very chill. Tom Clear, some organ or accordion. You know, so I like them finishing off with just some clearness to his voice. Yeah, yeah man, definitely a, a melancholic tune right here, uh, reflecting the changing times we all know uh, are kind of around the corner, so to speak, and yet are still tough to face once they get there. And then we finish off with a uh, short and sweet carnival uh, instrumental, I guess, aptly named right here. A bit of a cabaret type of jam. Yeah, to probably book in yeah. the whole thing. It starts out as a barker in the first song. <laughs> That's right. Here. Right. So uh, now, Dad, I guess that'll take us to uh, favorite tracks. Well, there's 20 <laughs> tracks. Now, like you said, some of them are instrumental. One of them's 18 seconds. The Briar and the Rose and Crossroads for me. Yeah, I got those two. I also got I'll Shoot the Moon and then uh, Lucky Day, which will now take us to uh, overall score of the record. Yeah, and you know, I kind of prepared you boys and girls at the start. <laughs> you're probably a big Waits fan if you're watching this or you're just a loyal follower of RTTC, <laughs> which Trey and I say thank you for that. Uh, for me... I love Waits, right? Mm -hmm. And I've given a lot of his albums high grades. This one for me, it just doesn't do it. But I don't blame the record. Yeah. Because this is written for a play. Mm -hmm. It's not Tom out here. So I'm sure he did a great job. And if the play is kind of like Cats in Europe, <laughs> yeah. for us here in the States, that's huge. Cats is known by everyone who's been around forever. But for me, I'm going to be at a 5.0 out mm -hmm. of 10 on this. And that's kind of being generous. That's kind of yeah. understanding that, look, man, I'm sure it fits into the narrative. So, you know, I did like some of the instrumentation and just... You know, Tom's mm -hmm. very varied on everything, so I'm going to give some credit there, but uh, it's going to be a 5.0 out of no. 10, and if you've never listened to it, for me, it'd be a pass. It's yeah. the first one I've listened to is I just, I just pass on it. I don't think you're going to get a lot out of it. Well, no, man. I, I think you bring up a lot of great points, Dad. I, I agree with a lot of it. I think this is Waits' most challenging work sure. if you're just going to look at it. And um, it would obviously work best with knowledge of the play. We yeah. did, didn't watch the play, so, you know, kind of flying in blind. Uh, there is also some filler on this, I think, as well, which is a bit uncharacteristic of Tom's work. But there are some bright spots that I think are worth the time if you want to maybe pull out the handful of tracks. Yeah, the ones that you we, said were your 
favorites. Yeah, yeah. highlighted. Uh, but for most, though, I think checking out those highlights is going to be sufficient on this, uh, though, for those brave enough to enter this dark world of the Black Rider. They, you know, maybe you'll find exactly what you're looking for. Sure. Um, I thought instrumentally the mix of strings and organ in particular were, uh, were very, uh, you know, kind of constant and uh, kind of unique. Rhythm and percussion were pretty strong, too, even if some of the songs went a little bit long. Uh, creative work that uh, th there's just not enough for me there to want to revisit uh, anytime soon. So I'm going to be at a, around you, Dad, a five and a half out of ten yeah. on this one uh, for me. But, uh, you know, I'm still glad we, hey, we're, we're completionists here, man. We, yeah, we, we are. We had to go through and uh, check it out. And, hey, man, I think, as you mentioned, Dad, it just kind of uh, reflects how creative a guy waits is. Yeah, and soon, somewhere in the future here at least, we'll have mule variations coming mm -hmm. up, which is one of his most well thought of works yeah. but as always we appreciate you josh for checking out we appreciate everybody for tuning in for this one you probably tuned in for a lot of the weights but if you haven't check out the tom waits playlist because that's going to have all of yeah. these reviews as well as some song reactions if you want to support us in any way like josh does check out the patreon link below or the link on the end screen that is about to hit yeah man and uh until next time y'all thanks so much for watching happy listening and we will see you